today I would like to chat about religion, about spirituality, and I would like to talk about a libertarian's relationship with friends who might be theists, or if the libertarian herself is a theist. How does this all work? Because when we look at libertarians, and when I say libertarians, I'm not referring to capital L, like the voting kind and such, who are essentially moderates or conservatives with liberty leanings, but but true blue, intellectually consistent libertarians, voluntarists, anti-subjectivists, those kinds of people. They're generally either agnostic or atheist. And why is this? And can those folks get along with Christian folks and Muslims and Jews and, and all the other religions? And I, I think the, the long story short is, yes, I think we can all get along with each other beautifully. Um, I am personally uh, an atheist. I was reared in the back hills of Tennessee in a Mennonite upbringing, attended Baptist churches, Seventh-day Adventist, Hooterite for a little bit when I was three years old, but that didn't stick so much. And I was actually saved. I was saved at altar call time at a Southern Baptist church when I was 13 or 14. And so that's kind of my upbringing. And then years later, I wound up going to uh, college, to junior college, and, and I took a women and religion class. And, and then later on at a different college in another state, I took a uh, uh, philosophy class that was the you know, philosophy 101, which is logic and reason. And I read a lot of books and I experienced some life and I observed the people around me. And, and in the long run, I came to the conclusion that I just wasn't persuaded that there was a, a God, that there was a higher power. And, and so I considered myself an agnostic because I thought, you know, I'm not going to really make a stand uh, about something I just don't know, and I don't really care. But then I realized it was kind of a cowardly position for me, and it might not be for you, but for me, it was a cowardly position. And, and I thought, you know, if there's anything else that has no proof of existence that I can comprehend, then I'm, I'm not going to give it the benefit of the doubt and say, eh, I don't really know. I, I'm going to say, no, I'm pretty darn sure, open to evidence otherwise, but I'm pretty darn sure that whatever it is, doesn't exist. Unicorns, whatever. And, and yes, I, it, this little segue, I did go there. Flying spaghetti monster, unicorns, Eric the magic god-eating penguin. There are all these things that some Christians find to be very offensive, and I don't mean them to be offensive. However, I do place as much credibility or, or as much I've been persuaded just as much to believe in unicorns as I have in uh, a god. So I do look at them as an equal thing, and I don't respect people who, uh, or I don't respect the thought process of people who believe in unicorns or gods, and I don't dislike the people. I just, I don't say, oh, there's a real thinker. There's an intellectual. Well, no, you can kind of choose being an intellectual, or you can choose being a theist. And you can still have many intellectual thoughts. And I have some dear friends who are very devout theists, ministers in, in various theist religions, and we're great pals. We can hang out and drink and just BS for hours and do construction projects together and, and go ATVing. And, and uh, we can just have a good old time doing all kinds of human stuff and be great friends but I don't call them intellectuals. And is that harsh? Is that mean? I, I actually told a friend a couple of months ago, I, I said, well, you're not an intellectual. And, he, and he's a Lutheran minister, and he, he takes his religion very seriously. And he was offended by that. And so I really put a lot of thought into this, uh, this uh, for days. And I thought, you know, that was rude of me. And I really thought about it, and I came to the conclusion, perhaps he didn't like to hear it, but if you look at the de uh, definition of intellectual, uh, he, he doesn't meet that definition. He is not an intellectual by definition. He has some very intellectual thoughts about many things, but he's not an intellectual. So that little aside is that I, that I just, I don't have respect for the thinking 
the type of thinking that believes in things that are are not proven, or, or I'm not even going to say proven, because there are a lot of burdens of proof. We all have these different burdens of proof. And for me, I, I get to choose mine. It's subjective, as is yours. And I subjectively say, eh, I'm not going to believe in a thing, an idea, a concept, uh, the existence of a a clump of atoms, whether they're a mountain or uh, whatever, I'm not going to believe in a thing until you've persuaded me, you've convinced me, you've proven to me that it exists. Well, the levels of proof, I don't have to hold uh, Mount Everest in my hand. I have never seen Mount Everest in person, but I have heard enough from enough people, and I've seen photographs that could have been Photoshopped. All the people who I've heard from could have been liars trying to to uh, persuade me, to convince me to believe in a falsehood. But overall, when I look at all of the evidence at hand, I say, yeah, I'm persuaded that there is a, a mountain called Mount Everest, and it's really tall, and there's a lot of snow on it. I believe that. I don't believe that there are unicorns. Now, I'm open to it. If unicorns do exist, I think that would be so nifty. My granddaughters would love it. Like, I would want to take them to visit one and let them pet the unicorn. And I mean, it would be awesome. However, I have not heard any logical evidence, reasoning, persuasion. I mean, I I just haven't been persuaded to believe that unicorns exist. And the same is true with with gods or even a single god. I have never seen any good logical proof or or been persuaded in a logical, reason-based way. And I'm open to this, but I've never, never heard it. I've never seen it. And until a person is able to prove that to me, I I can't believe in it. Now, somebody said to me, a a friend recently said, you're you're kind of a nice guy, shepherd with a positive attitude. You're optimistic. I can't believe you hate God. (laughs) I said, I don't hate God. I would have to believe that God exists before I could hate. I'm not opposed to the existence of a God. I just haven't been persuaded that there is one. And if we think about this, again, using the example of unicorns, I'm not opposed to the idea of unicorns existing. I'm not an anti-unicornist or an anti-theist. I am an atheist, and A means don't believe in it, don't think it exists. Not, I think it doesn't exist, but I don't think that it does exist, and there's there's a difference there. So I don't have any reason to think that there's a God, and if there is, I might or might not like the gal or guy, or the if it's not gender-specific, the, the this deity, this theistic thing. I might love them and I might hate them. If it's the one described in the Christian's Bible, especially the Old Testament, I, you know, I still have to, if I believed it, I might have to say, okay, you're the boss. You're not a very nice person, but you're the boss. You've done a few things that are really cool. And then some things are really nasty. I've looked at evilbible.com and I've I've looked at why won't God heal amputees.com. And I, I've looked these over and I've read and I've contemplated and and, and I've read a bunch of the Bible. I haven't read the whole thing and I'm not really interested in doing so. But as a kid, I was really into it. I mean, I was really into it. The other youth after the, the, the church in the morning, most of the other youth would go up on the hill. I think it was Columbia Hill Baptist Church. They'd go up higher on the, above the church on the hill and they'd play volleyball. And a group of three, four, five of us would get together and have a Bible study at the same time down in the church. That's how serious I was. I was really into it. And uh, I, I was, you know, I've given it a fair shot. And each time over the last 10, 20 years that I've said to a Christian friend specifically, I have some Muslim friends as well, some Jewish ones. It, when I've said something to them to the effect of, you know, I just haven't been persuaded the only argument that I get from them is illogical. It's begging the question. It, it's, it's some logical fallacy. And, and so I would require, before I would take something serious, or before I would waste time uh, on something that has already been pounded, this whole poor dead horse has just been beaten to death, 
I would require the person who's speaking with me to understand logic. And logic is not the same as common sense. Go look up the, uh, the book, Logically Felicious, 300 Logical Fallacies by Bo Bennett. And read at least 100 of them. Read all 300 of them. And know that that is a system, could be a wrong system, but it's a system that I trust. Logic, reason, scientific method, not necessarily all scientists, but the scientific method. Th this is how I subjectively choose to view the world. And I conclude that so far, no one has proven that government is necessary, unicorns exist, gods exist, or that I don't exist and I'm just a figment of my own imagination. None of those things have been proven to me. Nobody has given a good argument for any of these things. I'm open to it, but it's never been given. So the question I, I kind of asked at the beginning, can, can atheist and uh, agnostic and religious people all get along well with each other? Absolutely, absolutely. Now, maybe we can't have deep conversations about these areas. I, I don't think they're very fruitful. I, I've tried with an open mind and a loving heart to have these conversations, and we just don't get far. So if there's a club for Bigfoot exists and people are going to talk about Sasquatch and, and how Sasquatch is probably dating an alien that landed, okay, maybe, maybe this is all true. I'm not going to put energy into proving you wrong. I would just require that you put some energy and some intellectual honesty, some, some logic and reason, if you're going to try to persuade me otherwise. So you're not able to do that, in my opinion. So or no one has been able to so far. Maybe you will be the first person to think of a new angle or a, a good logical proof of religion, of the existence of a, a deity. And I'm open to that. But until then, let's be friends. We can still talk about the beautiful sunset. We can still talk about a lot of political things, about human freedom, about humanitarianism, about how, how we think about most other things. And I got to say, my, my Christian friends are good thinkers about all other topics. Like They require evidence and proof, and they don't fall for logical fallacies and such. It's just in this one area, reason goes out the window. So yes, we can still be friends. We can all still get along. But I think we do need to avoid that area until somebody has a good argument otherwise. Am I wrong? Am I wrong in any way here? If so, please do leave a message uh, down below, or I guess they call it a comment here on Odyssey and, and YouTubes. Uh, just leave a comment below, and I would love to address it uh, either in a future video where I might just reply to you right there. Please do subscribe. Thanks for listening, and uh, please do share your thoughts.